Yeah, this is the vibe of this event. The Pairs Cup is a whole lot of fun and great to see Cam Tolley and Phil Harrison already smiling. There's plenty of reason for Phil Harrison to be doing that, as we spoke about earlier. A phenomenal weekend from him as he took down the first players championship group that included one Tom Cousins. Fantastic opening break from Cam Tolley, really sledged those. And this will give Harrison and Tolley first poke in this match. Now, if you are new around here to the Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup, this is Pairs Pool, but not quite as you know it. These races are the same as we had in the Champions League. They're races to four or 20 minutes on the match clock, whichever one comes first. The draw is in play, as he said at the top of the show. Top of the league at the end of the night goes through. And how it works is we'll have a frame of scotch doubles to kick us off, which means in this first frame, of the match, both Harrison and Tolly will play alternate shots, or Mark and Harriet, should they come to the table. Two frames of singles, followed by a fourth frame of scotch. Two more singles, and should it be required, the seventh and deciding frame will be a scotch doubles frame as well. Other than that, it's the same game you all know and love. Pick your color set, pot your balls, pot the eight ball, win the frame. And it's something Phil Harrison has been doing an awful lot of in the past 48 hours. Yeah, just to put a bit of colour to what we were saying in terms of Phil and the level he played this past weekend in the Players' Championship. Over the course of the weekend, he had 48 frames against Tom Cousins, who's the best player in the world right now, top of the provisional rankings. And he was 25, 23 ahead in those 48 frames. Just incredible, really. The three-set match they put on for the group final was a, a, a treat for everyone that got to see it. Yeah, it really was. And typical in, in a way, although also I accept the point of view that it was a bit of a shame in a way that it was settled with a six red shootout. The format was changed this year in the Players' Championship, I think with an eye to probably reducing the, the number of six reds. And wouldn't you know it, first group final goes to a six red. But it, it, I think it was one of those. You just could not split Tom and Phil all weekend. They were both. The thing is, we're talking a lot about Phil because we've almost become conditioned now to the level that Top Cat's been playing. He's been a freak in nature for the last six months, categorically best player in the world, hands down. But Phil went toe-to-toe -to -toe over a very long distance with him over the weekend. Yeah, and it, it was just finish after finish after finish, but the quality of the finish, the, the, how tricky they, some of the layouts were and the way they were able to piece them together, the pair of them it neither deserved to lose. Super shot that from Phil to queue up this one. Down the line for Cameron Tolley. Pot this one, and the eight ball is waiting, and that's queued in lovely. And Phil Harrison knocks in the first eight ball of the Pairs Cup. Well, as you mentioned, it is a new partnership between these two, and they are really, really good mates. The old guard of Phil Harrison and Cameron Tolley. Cameron was an England international a long, long time ago. He came back in 2018 to the world of English eight ball. After 25 years, essentially retired without picking up his cue. Back in the 80s and the early 90s, he was some stick as a former England international. That's when he met, as he said in his interview earlier, a very young Phil Harrison. And uh, well, what Phil's done in Cam's absence is become one of the best players of all time. Yeah, he certainly has. Great partnership, and what a start they have had. Well, that's a bit of a feature so far, isn't it? Both breaks have been very similar in the sense they've been cut breaks that have almost jumped the cue ball off the table. Harriet getting right into this one, and this is the danger when you cut break, if you hit it too hard. Just actually a little bit lucky the cue ball stayed on the table because it's not given too well it's not giving a straight away an easy opportunity for phil harrison but knowing the level he's been playing at this weekend you'll fancy these yeah he was making these sort of clearances on repeat throughout the weekend interesting that cameron's got up to have a look at this as well just in case phil wants any input this is now a singles frame yeah what i love about how phil sort of as, uh, oh, Cam, don't play a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Phil tells it to sit back down. <laughs> well, we mentioned it's Cameron Tolley's first experience of the Pairs Cup, and that's the uh, that's the rookie mistake right there. We are on a singles frame. If Cam had have played a shot there, would have been loss of frame, which would have been fun. 
And he's, uh, he's enjoying that one. But he can enjoy it now he's sat in his seat and he hasn't conceded the frame. And as for Phil, though, and I thought it was a really insightful comment that Cameron said in his interview is that so many players would kill for the opportunity to play with Phil Harrison as a duo. They're, he's known each, other, they've known each other a very long time, but I've often said that Phil Harrison is your favourite pool player's favourite pool player. And I think this weekend, when he's had a bit of success, has just shown that the support on social media and what have you has been out in their droves. The respect that he's got within the game is second to none, really. Yeah, he's such a good guy off the table. And Everyone's just been waiting, even though he's won an event with Ultimate Pool, and he has had success. You know, he made a Pro Series final earlier this year. I think everyone's just been waiting for him to find his level again. Uh, it just felt like this weekend was a was a big moment for him. Yeah, absolutely. I, he was, and you know this from the conversations we've had, but he was quietly one of my tips to do really, really well this year. I spoke to him at the, at the turn of the year, and he got a few ducks in a row off the table, and he was starting to find a bit more time to practice and get back to his his old ways in terms of his his performance on the table and there was just some signs wasn't there a couple of glimmers that his, his level was starting to return and the issue that he's had is getting used to the the match clock and the shot clock because when Phil Harrison was in his heyday sort of the 2010 sort of stage but plenty before and after that was never a factor in this game and it's something he's had to get used to yeah, and he, he looked as comfortable as he ever has at 15 seconds a shot over the course of the past weekend. Oh, he's picked these apart beautifully. Perfect angle just to drop in behind. Probably got into that slightly too much, but he won't mind that. And we've, we often joke that, you know, Phil Harrison's in perfect position because he'll be shaking his head all the way around the table, but actually what a bit of a feature of the last weekend is we haven't seen much of that i think he feels like he's playing well as well yeah and also he knows that that's killing a little bit of time so he's caught himself a few times when he has shown reaction actually no you've, you've sometimes you've only got 15 seconds to work out a new plan so he, he's done a good job of kind of limiting that still see it from time to time but less of it than we're used to and this is one of the things that i do love about this competition you do see plenty of back and forth between the players out there Still talking about the fact that Cameron was about to go and play the second shot in that visit. And there was me thinking the only way a Phil Harrison pairing could get more entertaining was if, they, if he was out there with Carl Morris. <laughs> I don't think Cam Tolley's giving Carl a bit of a run for his money. Oh, his turn to break. He's going to stick with the cut break he had in the first frame. Oh, I mentioned that he absolutely sledged it, but it, yeah, no surprise to see him take a little bit off that cut break. Key ball stays very much on the table. And a decent opportunity here for Cam Tolley. Mentioned that he had a huge amount of time out of the game. But his big return came last year with a with a Challenger Series victory. It elevated him to pro status. And at the ripe old age of, we'll keep it to himself, he's uh, he's finding some success again. Yeah, and I think he, he's believing in himself as well. He has some confidence there. When you talk to him, off the table, we spoke. I spoke to him a fair bit at the last Pro Series event, and you know he knows that he's playing some really good stuff in practice, in tournaments, in his local area. So it's now just transferring it against the the top guys in the pro ranks. Now, are these two yellows to the bottom right set as a plant? Is that the plan? It, it's definitely the plan for me. If it's set straight, he's okay. If the yellow's going towards the reds, he might cause himself a problem here. Oh, it's okay, it's straight. Excellent. He held the cue ball really well there too because the difficult part about that shot was he was playing on the ball he was planting. I think he still could have done with one more. Well, one more turn of the cue ball and he'd all be at, all but be out here. Now he's got to play a good shot. Oh, it's a bit of a, bit of a masse for him. Yeah, change of grip. You don't see that very often. He switched his hand round. You can't quite see it on our camera there, but yeah, he's got that one all wrong. He, that was such a... He had to raise the butt of the cue so far that he switched the hand round completely. Played it more like a javelin than a than a pull shot. It's 
So first touch of the table for Mark Brazier. I was speaking to Mark a little bit earlier and was uh, very excited, but some natural nerves in there, which is to be expected. Always say to players playing in this sort of condition in an arena for the first time is you've just got to try and enjoy it. It's never easy out there and you always put so much pressure on yourself to do well, but I think it helps in the pairs at least if you've got a, an experienced campaigner out there with you and Harriet certainly is that. She's had loads of experience out in the arenas with Ultimate Pool. couple of rolls short of where he wanted to be here. It's a tough shot coming up. It is, but it all depends on the line of this cue ball. Yeah, it depends how he wants to play it. Play into the red. Yeah, and great it's control. All right, yeah, that's a nice shot. It's come out just par far enough past the yellow. If it hasn't, then he can play into the yellow again. He has enough angle on this one that he's closest to. My issue with that shot is with he, he had to play it with a fair bit of pace, but actually he judged that really well. A tougher shot than it looked into the middle with that sort of pace. Very little margin for error. Well, he decided he did need a nudge just to open up the red more, and the full ball cannon has not helped him. He needed that to be three-quarter ball, so Anything the cue ball else. goes up the table. And then he's on a choice of two, yeah. if not three. Anything but a full ball contact there. Difficult to play safe too. Might have to get creative. Cause the extension. Well, can he snick this back? He can. I'm just wondering whether it, is it worth the risk you, if you just brush off the red, leave the cue ball in the bottom right hand corner of the table. Okay, you're going to leave some sort of shot on, but in this format, you know, you're asking a big question here. He's seeing it a different way. Well, he's gone for the double. That was ambitious. Yeah, and that's just essentially giving the frame away with that shot. If you, you're either going to make it and have a chance to win the frame, but it's obviously a, a long odds to make it. And when you don't, you should lose the frame off it. I know, I know that you're sort of gambling a little bit if you play safe there, but in these short races, I think he would have been better odds of winning it going the other way. It's not come out too kindly for Cam Tolly, mind. Actually, the, the yellow to the middle, which will be his last ball, isn't. It may be a bit of a problem to get on the eight ball because he might only be able to finish high on it here. Let's play a couple of good shots in succession. If he can only go forward, and now he's looking at the other yellow, then he could have used the bottom cushion. What he couldn't do was leave himself just off straight. Oh, trouble trouble oh, is Mark Brazier in business here it's easy to look at this and say there's one awkward red but if Cameron leaves the cue ball in the top half of the table you can play the red off the other red and, and go out pretty easily here oh, it's going to come far enough down the table that that's not on This is it. I think there's a there's a real argument for playing the safety here. Play the red, try and hit the line of the eight ball and the yellow. Yellow is pretty safe if with you it being in the middle of the table. If you do play that, just watch going in off here, going across the top of the red. Just watch the in off. Just watch the in off. It's played yeah, that well. Nicely done. May just be able to see the thinnest edge of this yellow. I'm not. I don't think he can. I don't think he can pot it, which is the key thing. The one cushion is there. Off the left-hand side. Tough to judge, though. That's what he's looking at. Or is it? Top cushion and get it solid. Oh, not quite. We did see an absolutely monster fluke for Phil Harrison at the weekend. One of the best ones we've ever seen. It actually. was. It was very, very special. I think now's the time for Mark. I think you may have to just accept that you're going to have to come up 
with a good pot down the cushion. Safety's as hard as the pot. Yeah. Your eggs in a basket then. But don't snook yourself. So he's got to play with it. a little bit of force. Can't just drop this in. Did the right thing though, not trying to get straight. Just allow it to be a, a natural cue ball bouncing out. So just a comfortable pace rather than overhitting it. It was, it was tough. still tough though. And for me, that still, it goes back to the choice not to play safe when he didn't take out his original chance, simply because that attempted double was that ball that he just missed. And when he attempted to double it, he put the red in a really horrible place. Oh, Cam's a bit shorter than he would have liked there. And by a bit shorter, he's about three feet short. Playing the cut back. Plays it really well. Cue ball is safe. So 3 0, Harrison and Tolly lead. And I feel a little bit for Razor and Haynes here. They've not really had too much of a go. Yeah, Harriet's had the one shot after the break, hasn't it? That's it. And that can happen in the pairs. You have to kind of think about your order. You have to nominate your order before the matches and kind of oh, work out what you think's best. We saw it in last year's final, didn't we? Sean Chipperfield didn't have a, a shot at the table in the final of the Pairs Cup until midway through the second set. Carl didn't touch the table at all until the second set because <laughs> of the way the breaks fell as well. Lost the first set 4-0. Yeah, didn't even have a break. Didn't did even it? have a break. Did not play a single shot in the match until they were in the second set of the match. Incredible performance from them, actually, to take it as deep as they did in that second set, and they had a chance to, to steal it away and make it a six-red shootout. Great match, that one. So Mark Brazier back on the cut break. Four minutes probably need a little bit of help via a golden break if they can manufacture something. Four minutes is not a lot of time to run racks. That eight ball was moving. You notice there, Harriet straight up because she knows the only way to get things moving here is with a very, very quick finish off your own break. These she reds are kind of there. Yeah, would have loved to go yellows there, but no option on yellows. That's a nice shot. Wants to get past the straight on the red here. Mm, that's the wrong angle. May have to reroute to the top of the table. Yeah, you can see there, no angle at all. Tries to force it with a load of top spin, but actually jumped the cue ball because he played it with so much pace. <laughs> Has Harriet got herself a shot? I think she may do. It's Not an easy one, though. No, well, no. Too sure what you played in the end. Yeah, a little bit harsh. They couldn't go yellows there, had to go reds. And even then, it was it's just one shot to allow the transition from top to bottom, and it was hard to get the right side of the ball to be able to do that. Yeah, it's, it's all you've got to be so brave to fire those in down the rail to get the sort of top spin needed to, to beat the straight. So Phil Harrison and Cameron Tolley have their chance here to win the match by four frames to nil. Should be plain sailing now. Nothing in the way. Yeah, I love this little route they've crafted. Essentially, just get, goes to show even at the the real basic finishes like this, you can still make them. 
four straight shots in in a row to make your life super, super easy. Yeah, and you can also have it go the other way where they look easy and then you, it gets away from you. You could hear Phil there calling the shots. And this route was super simple for Phil Harrison and Cam Tolley who take the first victory of the Pairs Cup Tournament for 2023.